Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka here. Thank you so much for your patience, but welcome to Doom Eternal Mission 9 as part of our 100% walkthrough. These videos are taking about 10 hours each on some of these longer levels, and I have some duties that I need to fulfill outside of these videos. So as you can imagine, I'm kind of taking my time here, but hopefully you guys are sticking around and enjoying the videos. For our three mission challenges, they're not too bad, but quickly I'm going to say where we can get our first couple of collectibles. In the first area, drop down to the left and make sure you pick up the codex page entry. Additionally, you can drop down straight from here, look to the right to find a breakable wall, go inside to find the sentinel battery, and then we can climb back up to where we came from and proceed up the ramp. This will trigger a fight with only a few enemies, but one of them will be a marauder. For the marauder, there is a strategy that you should get used to, and that is pulling out your super shotgun and your ballista. As he attacks you, shoot him with your ballista, instantly switch to your super shotgun, and then double pump him as quickly as possible. This allows you to get two, sometimes even three hits in one stun. This is a strategy we will need for later, so keep that in mind. Now, in terms of the mission challenges, you have to get six total codex pages. I think there's seven. We'll get that as part of the collectibles. We also need to freeze 10 enemies, which is exceptionally easy. And the hardest one is to perform three glory kills on the Pain Elemental, which is like the really big kind of caco demon type enemy. And for that, we can kind of, uh, there will be, I think, five or six of them throughout the entire level. The only problem is they show up during really, really bad times, and it's very hard to glory kill them because they're always kind of in the middle of a huge fight, and you'll take a lot of damage if you focus on them too much. So I'll show you a little bit of a boosting method if you want later on in the Slayer Gate, and that'll be an option for you. Or you can just watch out for the Pain Elementals. Uh, but like I was saying, the um, with Marauder here, you have to practice this Marauder strategy because there is a Marauder we'll need to kill in under 30 seconds later for a Slayer Gate. So if you don't get this strategy down, it's very hard. You can double pump with a shotgun or go ballista to shotgun, up to you. You can also try to light them on fire, uh, which does help, but it doesn't really do enough to make it uh, a significant part of the strategy. So, uh, yeah. Just take your time and kill all the enemies here. Go through the gate once you're ready. Once the enemies are taken care of, you can walk forward and you want to boost up your, your ammo and your health and jump down to the left, you'll notice a swing bar. We'll need to swing across that bar to get to the ledge on the other side. Instead of going forward, instead you'll want to take out the enemy if you want, but you want to turn around and swing back to where we came from, landing on a small ledge underneath the bridge. This jump is a little bit difficult, but nothing too crazy. There is a much harder jump coming up later, unfortunately, for a collectible. At this point, you're ready to turn around and head back to where we came from, so jump off the ledge, double swing to our new ledge. I actually got stuck here, not knowing where to go for like a good two minutes. Look up into the left, and there's a climbable wall. You'll be able to climb it onto a bridge. Once you get on this bridge, I think a Mancubus spawns, so just take care of it. As soon as you take care of the enemies, walk forward from that bridge we were just on and look to your left. This one's pretty obvious, but don't miss it. A Praetor Suit Point. Don't equip your Praetor Suit Points if you don't have to for now. I'm going to show you some upgrades you might want for a hard section later on. It might be advantageous if you just save them for a couple. Now we can continue to walk forward and into the next area. Once you go inside of this area, there will be a large scale battle and there will be a new enemy type. There's basically this large, skinny type dude that glows red and has a defense flame shield. And that enemy basically works like a buff totem, but as an actual enemy. And additionally, that enemy will spawn other enemies. So once you see that the enemies start glowing red, that means that this buff totem type enemy is alive somewhere on the map. You want to keep an eye out for him or locate him by his big red shield. And this, once this enemy spawns, this is the only enemy you want to focus on. 
Now, I'm going to do this in a very ugly way, and I don't know why he took as much damage as he did. For some reason, he usually dies, like, somewhat quickly. I would say he has, like, a, a Baron of Health amount of health. For some reason, he was just staying alive forever for me right here. But after you take out this enemy, all of the other enemies should stop spawning, and then you can just clear everyone out. If you never clear this guy out, the enemies basically never stop spawning, and this takes forever. So make sure you take that enemy out, take out all of the other enemies, and I'll rejoin you with all the collectibles in this area before we leave. Now from the door where we entered, look at the statue directly in front of you, and to the left there will be a gore nest hidden around this corner. We're going to activate it. This one's pretty difficult. Feel free to use your BFG if you want. It makes it a lot easier but still somewhat difficult. I believe a Kako Demon, a Pain Elemental, and a Demon Hunter spawn as well as one or two small adds. You can use your BFG but the BFG is still quite difficult to use. Additionally, if you have a Blood Punch, definitely use it on the Demon Hunter Sled. And uh, after you take all of them out within the 35 seconds, you should get it. Again, this one is on the more difficult side. You can use your BFG. It will help immensely. But you can also do this. It's not impossible without a BFG either. So you just have to be careful. And once you finish it off, do not move on. Instead, go back to where that Gore Nest was and it'll obviously have disappeared by now i'm going to quickly go around and look for some ammo but go inside and then turn to the left you'll see a small tunnel with a green button click that button and this will open up a small door with a mastery token now the mastery token is actually very useful this is going to help us master weapons without actually having to do the mastery part so what i'm going to do once i pick this up is go to my arsenal and find a weapon that i want to master but that has a really difficult mastery path in my opinion the precision bolt requires 75 headshots that could take me a while i'm going to use my mastery token we're going to unlock a total of seven mastery tokens throughout our playthrough and we will have to master all weapons so keep that in mind feel free to spend some of your weapon points as well so i'm going to make sure to also upgrade my micro missiles while i'm in this menu saving my Praetor suit points for later. Once I'm done this, there are a few more collectibles we can grab. Go up the stairs and behind the statue. At the top, turn to the left and ignore the main mission objective for a bit. Just follow this path all the way to the end and there will be an auto map on the ledge to your right hand side. Pick it up as an optional objective, but definitely helpful for later on. There are some tricky objectives. I will actually show the map once or twice in this mission, which I don't normally do. Now you can go back to where we came from, where that statue was. Again, do not interact with the statue yet. We're not ready. Instead, I'm going to show you an extremely tricky, I believe it's a sentinel battery. Go to the other side, the, the right side of the statue, and then look alongside the wall, and you'll notice a crouching soldier with a crack in the statue. Melee it to reveal a button behind it, which will open up a gate that has a large counterweight. This gate will be kind of at the end of the other side upstairs here. Now, once you're in this room, you'll see a climbable wall. Climb on it, and then double jump towards the bell or the weight, and melee it to drop it through the floor. Once it drops through the floor, you want to follow it down there to reveal a secret room. And inside of this secret room, we can also find a sentinel battery. We'll want to pick that up. We are now finally ready to leave this room. To do so, go up to the statue at the top and melee it in the back. Once you melee the back of the statue, drop down and press the button behind it. This will open up the bottom pool. Before jumping in the toxic water, you might want to grab the rad suit, which is to the right hand, to the left hand side from the statue. You don't actually need the rad suit, but you definitely want it if you don't want to die every time you touch the toxic sludge. Now for the toxic sludge, you're going to dive to the bottom, melee through a grate. This will drain half the water, and then you'll be able to come back up, shoot a small target to drain the rest of the water and then you'll be able to kind of go through this area to link up to another area that we were unable to get to without doing this little puzzle. Okay. 
Once you can swim through to the other connecting area, you'll jump out of the water and you, I don't know which way you'll face when you jump out, but just do a 360 and you should locate a Praetor suit point uh, somewhere near you as you come out and make sure you grab that before you move on to the next room. After grabbing this Praetor suit point, you will be attacked by some enemies and you can work your way to the next room and you want to kill all of them before progressing. After coming in this room, you'll notice the large staircase as our main objective. To the right hand side of the area, from not far from where we came in, you can find a codex page, so make sure you pick this up. Now the next one is another really tricky collectible. Facing the top of the stairs, look near the bottom to the right hand side, you'll notice another statue we can break. Break it to reveal a button behind it. This button, you may not realize what it did, but on the staircase, there is now a ring of light on a platform. You can now stand inside of this platform to lower it, and this acts like a button opening a secret door not far from where we entered the area. Inside of this room is a secret, and we'll want to make sure we go pick it up. I believe it's a toy. After you pick it up, feel free to interact with the door at the top of the stairs to continue with the mission. Directly after that cutscene, look down and in front of you into the pit, you'll notice a 1-up in the middle of the area. We'll drop down and grab it, and then you'll just have to climb back up to where we just were. You don't have to really climb up in any direction in particular, but climb up and get back on that ring to notice a codex page. It's very obvious and directly in front of you as you exit the area, so pick it up and go in front of you. And this next battle is a little bit hard. It does have one of those optional enemies, the Pain Elementals. If you're going for that uh, side objective, you definitely want to try to glory kill it. But it's a pretty tough fight. Additionally, in this area, there is one shot of BFG ammo. I will be picking it up during the fight and using the ammo. So you might want to keep your eye out for that. The fight's not impossible, but definitely on the more challenging side. This level in general is one of the hardest levels in my opinion. And on my first playthrough, I think I lost a total of 10 lives or so. I think in this playthrough I don't lose any, but it's still quite challenging. When ready to leave the area, there are two malleable buttons you'll need to press to trigger the uh, kind of elevator in the middle. So to take that, you'll want to grab the kind of man cannon and they are across from each other. I'd go for the balcony one first because it's harder to get up here and then shoot across and hit the one underneath the little uh, bridge. And if both lights are shining on the rune at the same time, it'll trigger the elevator and allow you to go down. So drop down, and we're actually pretty soon here about to do our last Slayer Gate. If you've been following along, this will be your sixth out of sixth, and you'll also unlock an achievement for getting all of them, or a trophy. So we're going to walk forward all the way to the end. You'll see the Slayer Gate key. We're going to turn to the right-hand side, facing the way we entered, and there will be a small pool puzzle here. Pick up the Rad Suit if you don't already have it, so you definitely want to do that. And in order to complete this challenge, what we want to do is jump into the water and then dash through the breakable wall. 
I noticed that dashing underwater, generally speaking, is not a very good mechanic and quite hard to control. So hopefully you don't, uh, you know, struggle like I did. Now you're going to go on top of the malleable block and you have to swim underneath it and then through the wall right next to us. This will get us into a side room and this side room has another uh, breakable wall or a bullet we can shoot. So we're going to hop up on the ledge once we're ready and then shoot the little button and that will trigger the next phase of the pool. So we can drop down facing the button, go underneath it to find a breakable um, wall again. And once you break this, it'll lower the level once more. And now what we can do is jump across, shoot the button, move the melee block and proceed. Now, once we go through the door, walk towards the objective, but right before you reach the room in front of you, take a left-hand turn. You'll see the Slayer Gate right, the Slayer Gate key right here, and this will link you back by opening the fence to the area we kind of started with. If you walk forward through this newly opened gate to the right-hand side and up, you'll notice the Slayer Gate. This is the last Slayer Gate of the game, and by far the hardest. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick that's very important, so listen up. First off, as soon as the Slayer Gate starts, a Pain Elemental will spawn. You can continue to kill the same Pain Elemental with a Glory Kill in order to get all three of your challenges. I'll show you how it works right now. As soon as he spawns to the right hand side, shoot him twice or however many times you need on your difficulty in order to get him into a Glory Kill state, and then Glory Kill him. As soon as you get credit for this Glory Kill, just pause your game, load the last checkpoint, and this will bring you to right before the Slayer Gate. Just rinse and repeat this until you complete the challenge as I'm doing on screen right now. With that being said, you can do it legit and more of them will spawn later on in the mission if you prefer to do it the legitimate way. As for the Slayer Gate, this is a Slayer Gate with a ton of enemies and a couple of those new enemies that work like buff totems that I described earlier. Whenever this enemy spawns, it is our number one objective and the only thing we should be focusing on even if my gameplay is telling you contrary right now. Use any type of ammo you have to take out this enemy as quickly as possible, including things like rockets, the ballista, the super shotgun, or even the BFG if you are in a little bit of heat. Once you take out all the enemies, the Slayer Gate will stop. If you take out the buff totem enemy really quickly, this could only last a couple of minutes, but if you take a while to take them out, this Slayer Gate could literally last forever.
After completing the Slayer Gate, you'll be rewarded with the, sl the three Slayer Gate weapon points in the top right corner, and you'll be taken out of this screen. You will be presented with your final Empyrean key directly in front of you for number six out of six, and you'll unlock an achievement for completing all of the Slayer Gates if you did, so keep that in mind. We'll be using the keys at the end of this mission. The reason this video is so long is because at the end we also have to go back to the Fortress of Doom and mop it up to 100% before moving on to the next mission. So we can now walk forward and into the next room. Directly in front of us will be another BFG bullet. So you'll want to pick it up. You can save it. We are about to do another gore nest, but for the next gore nest, the BFG doesn't really help you at all. So feel free to use your BFG ammo now if you want and just stay alive and focus on the big enemies when possible. Now, one very important thing, make sure you end this fight with ballista and super shotgun ammo. If you do not have those two types of ammo and you trigger a checkpoint at the end of the fight, you will basically not be able to complete the gore nest that is coming up. With all of the enemies taken care of and ammo in our super shotgun and ballista, we're now ready to proceed to the secret encounter. Go up the stairs and to the left through the breakable wall. Before the secret encounter, just grab the collectible that sits right beside it. It sits as a question mark, so we'll just pick that up. And now the thing is we'll have to kill a marauder in about 30 seconds. To do this, you'll want to have the ballista and super shotgun equipped. The method for this involves switching back and forth between them quite a bit, so you might want to go to your suit upgrades and make sure you have the quick switch of weapons enabled. This will allow you to get multiple shots off in one stun. I'm also going to go ahead and upgrade my frag grenade as I do use two frag grenades in this strategy and you might as well get the most for it as possible even if it doesn't really damage the marauder. Now the enemies that spawn are the marauder and two random enemies. Just toss two grenades out and the random enemies should be taken care of pretty much on their own. Now for the marauder itself, stay at that medium range, attack it with the glowing eyes and what you want to do is hit it as it attacks you and then you want to switch weapons instantly and double shotgun it. You can even try to light them on fire for a couple of extra points of damage, as well as a little bit of armor. Again, this is going to be a little bit on the more difficult side, especially if you're on a harder difficulty. I am playing on normal, so I was able to do it with 14 seconds to spare. But if you're playing on nightmare difficulty and he just take, takes more bullets and does more damage, it's a little bit more difficult. If you do fail, feel free to rinse and repeat the checkpoint so you can refill your ammo. Additionally, the Marauder is resistant to BFG ammo, so don't even bother. 
At this point, you can climb up the climbable wall, and once you reach this large open area, turn around behind you, you'll notice two collectibles. One of them is a codex page, so make sure you pick it up, and on the opposite corner, we can find a sentinel battery. Now, don't go to the objective just yet. Go towards it, and instead go to the left-hand side, into this kind of side area. And in this side area, we can find two collectibles. At the end of it, we can find a Praetor suit point. And just to the right-hand side, over our shoulder, there is also a breakable wall. Break through that wall to find a secret inside. I believe it is a toy for the Marauder. Additionally, you can now interact with our main mission objective to get a cutscene. After the cutscene, turn to the right hand side and there will be a fight here. We will need to complete it in order to open up the door. You'll have a bunch of enemies including a super mancubus as well as a whiplash to take care of. If you have your super punch, uh, your blood punch rather, you definitely want to give it a shot at the cyber mancubus or save it for the marauder. I actually didn't mention this earlier but I believe the blood punch is very effective against the marauder as long as you hit him in the right phase. Um, either way, a Marauder will spawn, take care of all of the enemies, and then stock up on ammo, health, and any type of chainsaw ammo, um, stuff like that, and then we're ready to move on. Once done with the enemies, proceed to the mission objective, go up the ramp to the left, and you'll be in a kind of circular building. And instead of jumping out and across once you're supposed to, just continue following the hallway and find a collectible at the end of this hallway. It's a extra life one-up. Again, these aren't required for the 100%, but definitely something I would recommend that you pick up along the way. Next, what we can do is double jump, double dash across to the climbable wall, and we'll get a fight here. Now, this fight is technically optional, but I didn't do enough testing to be 100% confident in telling you to skip it. So I'm just going to go ahead and kill everyone here, but I think technically you could jump across the gap and ignore these enemies. Once ready, double jump and like triple dash across the gap using the pellet in order to make it into the building in front of us. Once in this building, there are some things we will want to grab. Now I'm going to go up to the second floor and a fight should start. I'm going to ignore the fight for like 10 seconds and show you where the collectible is right away as for you to not get confused. Come up the ladder and follow to the left or right in order to find an upgrade for your Praetor suit at the back of the area. Again, a ton of enemies will spawn, but I'm going to grab the suit right away, then kill all of the enemies, and before jumping over the big gap, let me rejoin you with commentary, as so that you do not miss the collectibles.
With all of the enemies taken care of, go towards our mission objective, which is to jump across this big gap right here. Do not do that. Instead, drop down below us and look behind you. There are two collectibles here. One is a codex page entry on the right hand side, and one is the sentinel crystal on the left hand side. Now, obviously you're free to upgrade your Sentinel Crystal whatever way you want. I prefer to have the three on the left and the top two on the right at this point in the game, but you may require more ammo for yourself, so feel free to upgrade your ammo instead. Now we can actually jump across that gap and do not run to the end of the hallway. On your way through this hallway, there will be a break in the floor and you can drop down in a hole right onto a swingable bar. So swing on that bar and then continue underneath and find an extra life one up and then a portal that links you back into the hallway and we can now proceed through the door. As soon as you come through the door, go to the left and you'll find a button. This is a kind of short puzzle where you have to melee two melee pads after interacting with some buttons and just do it quick enough by dashing across to make sure that they line up the way they should and it'll open up. As soon as the door opens up, our mission objective is in front of us. Before we do that, there's a very obvious codex page entry to the left of the page. We're going to grab that. This will allow us to get our six out of six for the side uh, side mission objective. There are more uh, to go, though, so uh, we will get a couple more codex page entries. After interacting with the cutscene, we can skip it or watch it and then take an elevator up. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky. Once the elevator reaches the top, we will have to find a button and the button is located kind of behind this throne on a small ledge that is actually really hard to see. So press that and this will spawn two man cannons that kind of bring you up to a weight in the middle of the area that allows you to break through the floor. So we're going to do that, but we're not going to leave the area after that happens. So we're going to jump in the man cannon, melee the weight and drop it through the floor. And before leaving, let's grab ourselves an album. This album is a little bit tricky. It is basically above the door we entered from through a breakable wall. It's reachable from either of the man cannons, so that's up to you, but does require a decent amount of timing with the kind of boost jump and then the two dashes. So I actually meleeed through the wall, but wasn't able to grab onto the ledge. So I'm gonna go for a second attempt here. And on the second attempt, I end up grabbing the ledge and going inside, grabbing this album. Now I can drop down through the middle of the floor. After going and picking up the rad suit, do not drop down the big pit in the middle. Instead, stay along the outside and locate a Praetor suit point on the opposite side from where we entered. After this Praetor suit point, we will need to drop down the hole, but there's a collectible along the way down, and this is probably the hardest collectible in the game. Look down the pit, and if you have the auto map, now might be a good time to actually open it up. You'll notice that through this pit, there is a tiny ledge, and we have to try to get onto that ledge. It's actually through a breakable wall. Jump down and then soften your landing halfway through, double dashing into this secret area. You might have to melee your way through to get through the gate, but if you land on this platform, you can find a secret inside. Now, luckily, if you miss the jump, you'll hit the bottom, and then you just have to quickly reload the checkpoint before it saves on you, and you can keep trying as long as you need. Jump down into the toxic water and break the chain with a dash, and this will allow the block to float up to the top. Once the block floats up to the top, we are also going to go up to the top and jump on top, and now we can shoot the button to open up a gate, double jumping, grabbing onto the ledge into this side room where a bunch of enemies will spawn. We will take care of them as if we do not, we cannot leave this area.
once the door opens up and we are ready to leave, what we can do is see that there is another rad suit. We'll probably want to pick it up so we don't take damage from the toxic water. And then what we'll want to do is look down the river and you'll notice that there is a shootable button. We will shoot it and that will open up a small gate underneath the water. We're now ready to jump into the water and dash through the grate in the very middle in order to lower the water level one more. Once we lower the water level all the way to the bottom, we can now jump on top of the melee block and we'll be able to notice a shootable block. This will open up the gate above it, which is only accessible by doing these wall climbs. These wall climbs actually uh, were hidden from me for a while. It took me a good minute or two to find them actually. Now, once you get back into this room, you'll have another fight. This time, it'll be a little longer and a little harder. I'm just going to go for the BFG ammo just to clear out the first wave. In retrospect, probably not a great idea. I didn't even kill the Super Mancubus. And all of the enemies, that the hard ones at least, spawn at the end of the fight anyways. Once the enemies are cleared, the gate to the next area should open up with a very, very obvious codex page entry in front of you and to the right. You shouldn't miss this one, but hopefully, uh, you know, I'm helpful anyways. And then you can drop down. Do not go towards your mission objective unless until you go to the middle at the end of the bridge and find your second mastery token. Feel free to equip it to a weapon you enjoy. Now, if you load up your map, we should actually have all the collectibles. I would still keep watching. There are a lot of things we have still yet to do. Now, once you dunk this key into the pool, it'll basically become a huge sheath. And it's basically a huge sword that one hits just about anything. This next fight, do not use your sword until that buff totem enemy spawns. The one that can spawn other enemies and buff them. Now, what I did the first time I went through this was I used all of the sheath ammo all around just to kill all of the simple basic enemies that spawned in right away. This was a good strategy up until a ton of big enemies all spawn at the same time, and then I lost 9 lives trying to beat this fight. It was extremely difficult. What we're trying to do is wait until that buff totem enemy spawns, and once they do, take out your sheath, then take out the enemy, and then just take out all of the rest of the ads and you'll finish this fight within a minute or two instead of 10 or 15 minutes. So go ahead and do that. With all of the enemies dead, we can now fast travel back if we need to, and we can also exit the level. Now, don't quit watching the video. I have a lot of things to talk about in the Fortress of Doom, but we're going to exit the level for now and teleport there. We should get, get all 10 of our weapon point masteries for combat, all three of our mission challenges, whether we did them legit or not, and the 25 exploration. You also unlock an achievement for completing this level and an achievement for getting all the collectibles. 
Now, inside of the Fortress of Doom, you will get a warning that this is the last time you're able to be in the Fortress of Doom until the end of the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn around behind us and grab all the collectibles. The first one you'll notice is sitting on a ledge above here. You might not know how to get up there. What you need to do is shoot this red button and that will activate a lift. We can now take the lift up to this collectible, which will be a secret album. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure we buy all of the upgrades that are available here. So to do that, what you want to do is work your way to the back of the room. And before you do anything, make sure you have both mod bots and both Praetor suit points in the middle floor at the back. Drop down to the bottom floor and make sure you have both of the Sentinel crystals. I showed these off in an earlier video, which is why I'm kind of skipping over them. Then, in the middle of this room, on the middle floor, you can sacrifice your six Empyrean keys to open up the Unmaker. I believe this was a weapon that was only in Doom 64, and it actually goes in the same slot as your BFG, and you can switch back and forth between the BFG and this. They actually share ammo. Apparently, this gun is an absolute beast, but I haven't had a chance to try it at the point of filming this video. So now we have the Unmaker, and before we leave, there are a bunch more collectibles we will grab. So you're free to try to use your map, but I'm going to guide you to exactly where to go. Turn around from the Unmaker, head back, and then take a right-hand turn after going through the door. And you'll notice that there is a door on the right-hand side we can pass through, and then we can pass through a second door. This will link us to an outdoor area with a large dome. We will need to sacrifice two more Sentinel batteries to get inside of this dome, so make sure you do so. As you do this, you should get a cosmetic item, but we also require access to this room in order to jump down underneath it in order to get what I believe is a secret album or a cheat code, a cheat code actually. So open up this room and get your little custom skin. And once inside, go to the left, and you're basically trying to drop down into a room behind, like underneath you. And uh, get inside and get your cheat code. This will also open up a teleport that brings us back to where we came from. Still a couple more collectibles to go. So uh, go through that teleport. This will link you back to the outdoor area. Go forward and back to the kind of large room we came from. What we want to do once in this large room is look off the balcony and drop one story below us, and then drop a second story below us. Once you drop these two floors on these balconies, you should notice that you can sacrifice a couple more Sentinel batteries for a Praetor suit point. This Praetor suit point exists on both sides of this area, so make sure you grab both of them before the last collectible. With all of these Praetor suit points out of the way, you can pretty much upgrade everything except one thing. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Don't worry, we'll get the rest of the Praetor suit points we need for 100% uh, by the time we finish the video. But for now, this is as much as we can do. You may also want to go through your weapons and your weapon masteries in order to upgrade those before the next mission. Then go up the stairs and link back to this kind of room that we entered from. And on the far right-hand side at the back... There is a small hallway with a door and a back office. Inside of here, there is a codex page entry. I would highly suggest going to the map now and just verifying that in the bottom right hand corner, you have found all of the items for the Fortress of Doom. As we will be leaving and not coming back, at least for the purposes of this video. So you definitely want to do all that. Make sure you have 100% here. Make sure you have the Unmaker and you're ready to leave. You know, upgrade your Praetor suit, upgrade your weapons, and leave through the portal for the next mission, mission 10, 
I think this is mission nine. I forget. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Uh, Patreon if that's your thing. Sorry if my commentary was a little lower energy than usual. Stayed up all day to make this video. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Peace.